All right, so we are about to do a buttonhole and we are choosing to have a singular rose in the buttonhole with some backing leaves and a front leaf and possibly a little bit of a filler element as well. So we've got a rose here that is sort of a semi-size, so it's not too small, not too big. Um, the spray roses that we can find are mostly around about this size or um, possibly even that size. Um, and the rose that we're looking at has a bit of a longer fo um, focal, um, so you've got a bit more of a petal length here, but it's not a massive rose either, so it has uh, not as much weight to it. Okay, so we've got a lovely medium-sized rose. This was a 40 centimeter rose at the markets, so um, that's generally a quite good head as well. So they're not too massive. So th some of the imported roses are just a little bit too big. So we're working with this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'll take about two to three fingers worth of length of this rose, but I'm keeping the natural stem intact. And all I'm going to do is I'm using a 22 gauge wire just to go into the head here. And you can maybe see the insertion here just going straight through here. And I'm going to cut this off here. So it's just a fraction shorter than the stem itself. I'm going to use my parafilm tape and I'm stretching it around. Taping it, this is probably not the right one. Let me just get this piece here. So I'm going to stretch that around. You can see that stretches much better. Sometimes it's really the sheer quality of the tape to make that actually stretch as much as it does here. So we want to stretch this lovely and thin. I'm going to work our way all the way down, right down to the base. And we're also coating the base area here with the parafilm tape, slightly bringing it up again to make it anchor, rip it off and attach itself. It attaches itself pretty much there. So what that is, um, is just a strengthening of the stem and connecting stem and head together. All right. So once you're done with these kind of things, you can, um, the individual elements, they can be sprayed with a little bit of a professional um, conditioning spray for the flowers. So I'll just mist that over, not on the surface, but I'll mist it over for you, for us. And it will just keep happy and until it's getting used and assembled. Okay. The second thing we need is um, backing leaves. Now backing leaves also will get a 22 gauge wire onto the back. So we'd like this, this leaf here to be the backing leaf for this particular rose here. And generally what I do is I try to add a second leaf that is slightly smaller of the same type or possibly even turning it around or having a different type of leaf like for example a ruscus leaf just to join the first one it just adds a little bit more width here and it gives it a really nice backdrop for the flowers so you want to match the size of the leaf to the size of the flower head that you're working with now we're working with the wire into the halfway mark we're stitching in and out just very quickly across the vein here so you'll see only just a little stitch there and we're following the wire through to about there, which means that is about the same length as the remainder of the leaf base. And we're bending it over to here. Now what you can do at this time is you're adding your T-pin and placing it just in line with all those other uh, materials. So the stem is about the same as that plastic part here. And we're going to follow the fingers down and winding the wire around the base here to hold it firmly. So we have now attached the wire onto the leaf, but at the same time we've pretty much um, done two things in one. In one go we have attached our T-pin, which is the one that we'll pin onto the lapel later. Okay. So the second leaf, I'll just show you that or I'll demonstrate you that wiring technique again. 22 gauge wire in and out with the stitch, following through with the wire, bending down, following the fingers down, ending, adding a little handlebar here and pulling on the handlebar firmly to make it nice and strong. And we have a lovely single wired, single leg wired leaf here as well. 
So these two items here will now get attached together with a parafilm tape. And we'll just go underneath the bundle, pull on the tape and wrap it over our fingers. They're just sitting parallel to each other at this stage. Hope you can see that there. And then we'll just wrap the tape around by twirling between our fingers and stretching the tape nice and diagonally down the stem. We don't need to go all the way down the wires here because we won't need that length later. And now we're just bringing them on a bit of an angle so they have a little bit of space between them. Slightly overlapped and this is what it looks like from the back. Okay. So now we've got the second element. So rows is done, the leaves are done, and we can also bring a little bit of a leaf to the front later on. So what I would do with this one is I'll roll a ruscus leaf, for example, from the tip down, right down to the base, like that. Then we're going to use a 24 gauge for this one. We're hooking it over like a little pin, a hairpin, and we're pushing that wire through all the way from the front, from the top here all the way down. I'll show you in a second where that ends up coming out. So it just comes out on the base here. Then we'll bring this together and again we're doing the handlebar wiring to attach it together. So we have a little loopy thing here which is quite cute to just sit on the base there. Again, anything that is wired will be taped, so we're just going to parafilm tape this as well. And we're happy with that. Good. Now what you can do and what you can add, what I find quite pretty and quite cute, is a couple of elements that are just sitting on the base of the flower once it is sitting on the leaf. So instead of just finishing here with the leaf here, which is obviously a quite simple and straightforward buttonhole look, um, you could add something like an extra little flower just on the side here or you could perhaps add even a couple of blooms, something very small or um, another option would be to have something like a little buds of some description or even something like this you could sit along the way. So you can vamp these up as much as you um, like. So I'm thinking these two might be quite cute and possibly one of those little leucodendrons as well. What do you think? I think that'll be quite cute. So we're going to make these work for us. That means that we obviously have to take the natural stem off quite short so we can wire them, substitute that product so substituting the stem of the product with the wire. We're using a 24 gauge for these quite light elements and I'd say we can perhaps bring two together in the one wire. So this may be a bit fiddly for you, so if you feel like that's a bit too fiddly to make that work for you, feel free to leave a bit more stem on the product itself. I'm just wiring this as best as I can here and it's worked. I took a couple more turns than I usually do and then we're taping this over again. Now that is a beautiful little bundle that can be applied in any which angle and that's the beauty of wiring obviously to have that flexibility in the stem. And the next product will be just these little buds here. They're from a little shrub. Um, I'm not actually sure what it was. It's a quite cute little shrub and I thought that might be a pretty addition and it does hold up quite well. I've tried that before. Quite cute. Just a little something something. So it could be obviously gelatin wax or it could be a couple of hypericum berries or the like that you can then fill underneath the neck of the flower. Okay, so we're assembling now. We've got our two elements that we wanted to add and we've got this lovely little rolled leaf that we can also bring to the very end. So we're taking our design, um, our leaves, and we're assembling our design. So we're adding this straight on 
the leaf so we're all keeping everything very parallel all aligned in the center there we're adding the next product on the side making sure we have a little something something of these little tufts and we can also let me just leave that on the side here and I'll put the leaf into the center here okay so that will be a nice combination we're cutting this off I'll just quickly do that on the side here so we don't have the mess on here so I cut this all snug and straight and now we're going to tape it I'll start on the bottom because this is where I can reach it better for now just making sure I've definitely brought it all the way around the bottom there as well and now stretching it upwards towards the very neck of my design and bringing the tape all the way around probably have to just get a little bit more tape off the roll always best to work with the tape off the roll cut yourself a nice generous piece off and you're ready to rock and roll or tape and roll really <laughs> twirly twirly in between our fingers so this hand really doesn't work the wrist doesn't move at all it's really just the fingers working and this is our buttonhole completion so we've got a little leaf here we've got a little bundle here tough little bundle here so we don't have access to the very base of the rows and it's completed that way it's going to sit nicely on the lapel like so i hope you enjoyed this section and we're going to go on to the corsage next thank you Okay, so I've got the materials ready for the corsage now. Um, what you can do with the corsage, which is obviously the female version of the buttonhole, um, you can add accessories like little ribbon loops or little feathers um, to the design itself um, if you are inclined. Um, so you can pretty much just gather the ribbons around and feed a 24 or 26 gauge wire around this. Same here with the feathers. Um, it is a nice little addition to the design. It gives you a little bit more uh, of a feminine character. But in this case here, I'm choosing to have it a little bit more on the rustic side. I'm going to keep it with the Sterlingia pieces here. Again, we've got a lovely um, rustic selection here with a little bit of um, the Leucodendron. And we also have some smaller leaves, Ruscus and the other one <laughs> that I don't know the name of. I will find that out. Okay, so we're using majority of the wires we're using is going to be 24 gauge to hold all the products together and attach them singly as well. So we've got the wiring technique as we know it for the leaves. 
pushing through halfway mark and we're winding around and straightening and we'll repeat this for another few times so in total you'll be looking at a rough amount of five leaves possibly six so I'm just going to do six just to be safe and I seem to have the habit of just wiring everything first and then taping everything once it's all wired so I can just stay in my little flow with the wiring but you can choose to wire and tape alternately so here we go there's our wired leaves and we'll tape them over again with our lovely tape paraffin tape nice and stretchy thin and long down the stem so just in the back pulling it around and twirling with the fingers there to the back pull and twirling down the stem so you can see my wrists are not moving so please get into a habit of taping the way that you don't need to use your wrists but you're just working with your fingertips there it's already done and we're going to do number four five actually and then number six here we go Oops. and taping it down beautiful so we've got our leaves organized so I'll put them on the side for now and we can create our little bundles while they're making little filling elements to go in between the flowers again we're using our 24 gauge this is the second thickest in the wire bag so or the second thinnest of the wire bag and we'll need that to just attach those lightweight products here and here as soon as you've substituted you can take that natural stem off as short as possible and here you can even do that prior and just keeping a little bit of stem holding the wire just underneath where you can hook it into the little leaf here if that's make that makes it easier for you to hold it then just a handlebar along the very base here so we're just keeping one wire long it's also called single leg wiring and we're doing the same taping mechanics as we know it just starting right at the top covering as much as we can of the wire disguising our mechanics making sure it's all looking clean and it's also obviously the tape is helping to keep the flowers fresh and also keeps the sharp ends of the wire in and it's tucked under okay so there's our three little bundles here or little lucodendrons and then we can maybe use some of these I thought might be nice for the colors 24 gauge wire yet again we're all working with quite lightweight products but the 26 would be just a little bit too fine for this so 24 is my go-to wire for most of the corsage making there we go just underneath the bundle bending over have a little loop there and wiring around with a little handlebar straightening out and then one more we could probably um, add just a little fraction more of this strelingia it's a lovely product at this stage at this time of year here in Perth it's a winter product or spring product so there we go there's our three pieces there and yet again you have guessed it we're going to tape it, stretching, pulling away. And you can use every single little crevice of your tape. I'll use even these shorty bits here and, st and work with them. So there's not much wastage on my table whatsoever when it comes to tape. And I'm going to just add a little bit more to it. Yeah. 
will lengthen it down. Lovely. So when it comes to the roses, in this case here, I would say we're going to use only three roses because these spray roses here are quite a large size. So we're going to work with just the three and I think that'll be sufficient. I'll show you how to wire these. So I've taken the sepals off, which are the green surrounding leaves here, that can be quite in the way whilst you're trying to wire, but you don't want to rip them off, but you only just really want to cut them with your secateurs just around the base here, straight through. Okay, so we've got the base here. We've still got that little um, base part of the rose there. We don't want to cut it too short, so we want to make sure we have a little bit of a leftover stump here so we can easily insert our wires into here. And we're using a 24 gauge wire again. And what we are about to do is a crisscross technique. So that means that we're just keeping one wire long and the other crossing wire, both pieces are quite short. And then we're gonna bend all of these down to the tip on the end here. We're taking the long wire around a couple of times just to connect them together. And the end product looks like this before it's taped. Okay, so we can use the shorter one again for the next crisscross, and we're using another wire going up the other way. Let's go a little bit higher up to a mouse axis, and we'll do the same here bending bending, bringing it together, and we are twirling it around a little bit. And a th third time, and last time, this wire here. So I've used a third of the wire length for each of those longer parts. And we're bending down, bending down, and bringing the wire around to hold it, okay? And then we're going to tape that over again, going as high up as we can to really capture the insertions there and trying to hide mechanics yet again. And we're twirling down. And we're going again. Hope you can see that well. Pulling around with our fingers just above our hand. So we're really trying to cover this area up there where the insertions were. And then we're bringing the twirling action into gear again and taping down the stem or the wire. <laughs> and we're going to do that one more time, just for good measure. One, two times around. I'd rather do that twice, just to make sure it doesn't slip and really stays firmly. And working our way down again. You don't have to, again, do the whole wire, only about two-thirds of that, so you have a good grip in where you're working. Again, I will use a little bit of a water um, spray or a flower food spray here to make these um, happy. But I'll have to do that after taping so it doesn't get wet before taping. Okay, so there's a little sprayed roses. Happy to go. All right. So the assembling of your corsage is as follows. We need to have a couple of leaves on the top area and we're fanning them out a little bit or making them like a V shape. And then we're adding a third leaf just on the side here. Okay, so this is our starting point here. If you would like to tape this, you can tape it. Um, it is entirely your call. If you feel like you wanted to hold this together, you can, but I generally don't do that. Um, I'll show you what you would do if you were, were to do so. Hang on a second, that was the wrong tape. Here we go. Just around a couple of times just to hold these in place with that one, two, three. So they are sitting on the same level on here. The base is all that way. So the wires are underneath and the little stitches are visible to the top. Okay, and we're going to get started with a little bit of a filler. And again, we're working um, onto the leaf with the filler. We're keeping our stems parallel aligned with those stems of wire. If I say stems, I mean wire now. <laughs> 
and we're going to bend this possibly a little bit over. Again, this is all going straight down. I might start with a rose already. Bring that up into here. And I'm alternating my products a little bit. So back to the side with a bit of the Stirlingia. And maybe back to this side here with a little bit of the cute leucodendrons. Then I'm going to do a second rose. I might shift this one up a little bit higher. Second rose. And you can see the side view. The rose here is already you know, coming a little bit more towards the center and also a little bit more upwards with its face. Look at dendron sitting there, would be probably a good idea. And then we bring the third rose into here. Maybe bring the look at dendron a fraction higher so those rose heads have room. They are particularly nice and big. So I'll need a little bit more space. So what you can see from the side view, I'm just going to show you that again, is that this rose here is pretty much vertical of that nice 90 degree angle here of the backing leaf. So it's just facing straight forward. And now we can stop here and we're working with some leaves that are bending right over themselves and tuck them underneath the rose head right here. And the wire allows me to bend them beautifully around. One, two, and we've got another one here that we can do bend to the other side where the other rose was or is. So you can see that this assembly process is now finished. You can see your three roses. You don't want to make these corsages extremely heavy. Um, it's not a good idea to make them heavy in any way because they're going to obviously pull off the fabric on the dress of the ladies. Um, another addition here could possibly be something like a little bit of feather or possibly a little bit of ribbon in the right color. Okay, so that would be an option. You can also obviously add more of these elements of the leucodendron or you could add some pearls, whatever suits the design and the dress style and the theme of the wedding, of course. All right, so we're now cutting this quite short. So I'm taking all these off. And I'm leaving around about two stems, uh, two fingers worth of um, wire. So the length of the wire is around about this. You can see the back area here. So once you've got fi you've finalized your design, um, it looks a bit like this from the back. So you've got your three leaves this way, and the other three leaves close by, downwards directed. Um, we've just added this little feathery thing here which is quite cheeky would normally feed that in the right way and then connecting it down in line with everything else so i might just snip this off just a fraction more here we are and then we're going to be taping all of this a little bit together to start off with and then we obviously need to attach a t-bar as well just to make sure that we have an attachment option for the person carrying it or wearing it rather so i'm just putting the t-bar in here just on the base of those three leaves up the top keeping it quite centered so it's a bit like a brooch design really in the end um, and i'll just carry that tape down and up again making sure it's well covered. I would now also give this a little bit of a spray once we've finalized everything and we're putting all the leaves in a good position so it's a nice collar around it in the back. So you've got that pin here that will obviously attach firstly and then I always give my customer at least another one um, pearl pin as well so they can attach to parts so they can attach the top here with that t-pin and they can also attach uh, from the base so it just becomes a well-balanced design on the jacket or on the dress itself. So that's the final result here 
and I think that's looking rather cute and um, I hope you had a couple of learning curves here and I think the application really the step-by-step -step process is really just keeping in mind having the three leaves sitting quite close together but splaying out um, and then working from the top down into the center and then working your way to the back with the leaves just sitting on the angles here uh, one two three so always wiring the leaves way up into the leaf a vein just at least a good third to about halfway up so you have firstly good support and secondly that option to really bend it on the right angles there all right so there's your dress corsage finalized so we had dress corsage number one and you had also your um, buttonhole design with the buttonhole I generally give the customer also another pin to um, make sure that it can be worn um, nice and comfortably and it will definitely hold on the lapel all right so I hope you enjoyed yourselves here and um, have fun making it thank you bye